Hello people, in this uh, video we are looking at this book The ECG Made Easy, 9th edition by John Hampton and Joanna Hampton. There are quite a few books like this which are promising to make ECG easy like this one here. Well, this video is only about this book, so let's look at this one now. Look at the contents, the basics, the fundamentals of ECG recording, what is ECG all about, conduction of this electric signal in the heart, rhythm of the heart, P waves, QRS complexes, T waves, how ECG will be in healthy people, how ECG will be in people with chest pain and breathlessness, right? How ECG will be in patients with palpitations or syncope. Palpitations is a sense of awareness of the heart beating, right? And uh, you, ECGs you must be able to recognize. So those are the must must know types of ECGs, okay? In the beginning of this book itself, they have given the glossary unlike other books which in which at the end it is okay so what do you mean by a heart block first degree prolongation of the pr interval second degree some p waves are conducted and others are not third degree no conduction through the his bundle the bundle of his right some things they have given here so when do you need an ecg to be done so whenever the patient is complaining of some uneasiness, you know, with some sweating, when you suspect some kind of a problem with the heart, chest pain, palpitation, breathlessness, dizziness, or if the patient has an episode of syncope, right, blackout. Syncope is anything because of the heart, right, uh, the hypotension could cause it, etc. So unexplained fall, so all this. So basically ECG, you know, we don't exactly go with chest pain, palpitation, breathlessness, dizziness, etc. We Anything uneasy feeling which is pointing to a probable um, impending heart condition also they do okay so how to record ECG is what they are talking about here right and um, look at this uh, these are the this is the 12 lead ECG where they are showing you the leads and then these uh, six uh, limb leads right they are showing are you able to see people okay so let us look at the normal ECG, the one heartbeat that they are showing, okay, like this, P, Q, R, S, complex and T, right, there will also be a U wave. So how the uh, uh, electric signals are going from the sinoatrial node via the atroventricular node, right, then the bundle of his, right, to the ventricles. So that is what you should know. And uh, you should always focus on the rate. The rate, like the closer the QRS complex, then it will be uh, heart is beating fast, so tachycardia, right? So uh, normally from one QRS to the other QRS, it should be three to five squares. If it is uh, less than that, it means that it is tachycardia. If it is, if these are wide apart, it means to say that it is bradycardia. So you just take uh, 300 and divide by the number of squares, right? So after come, uh, after rate comes rhythm. So what do you mean? What are the types of rhythm? Sinus rhythm. This is what is normal, right? So uh, it is coming from the sinoatrial node. That's what it means. So you should have this P wave. So one P wave for each QRS complex if it is there, then they are saying it is a sinus rhythm, right? So this is normal. Now then you have uh, something else called as tachycardia. They are talking about complete heart block, okay? So the Q waves are there, but they do not relate to the QRS complexes. I mean, the P waves are present, right? P waves are present, but they are not related to the QRS complexes. This is complete heart block, they are saying, is it? Some other information also should be there, guys. You need to read this more in detail. Then you have sinus arrhythmia. This is what I typically have because, not arrhythmia, tachycardia I have. Okay. Once it crosses that level, then you will go into arrhythmia. And then they are talking about ventricular fibrillation. So, what do you see here? There is no visible P wave or QRS complex. It is chaotic, irregular. So, this uh, also talks about the red flags you should be aware of. 
right so if the ventricular rate is above 120 right atrial fibrillation if it is there if this complete heart block it can mean any heart disease if the st segment is elevated or depression it can mean in, in myocardial infarction or ischemia if there is abdominal t wave inversion infarction ischemia pulmonary embolism wide qrs width if it's there any heart disease okay so red flags they are talking about so what are we looking at people we are looking at this book the ecg made easy ninth edition by john hampton and joanna hampton so here they are trying to reassure people at the end of this chapter top tip don't panic the ecg really is very easy doesn't feel that easy though does it so you will have to sit down and read this book page to page guys and then how each of these leads will give the waveform that also they are explaining here and what happens if you reverse these electrodes right that you should be able to identify at an ECG and suddenly say hey come on they have not done this correctly right that is also one talent or if the patient has moved right while making the ECG or if they are wearing any metal uh, ornaments or if there's any metal by the side of the person all those can affect the ECG guys so um, let me ask you a question do you know how to declare a person dead you know the pupils you will check uh, etc the heart sounds uh, pulse you will check right all that but ecg also has to be given right you will have to record the flat ecg to prove the person dead so all the lines will be flat look at that if you have not looked at that okay so that will indicate zero electrical activity but make sure that you have actually connected the leads properly also so here conduction and its problems so they are talking about a hard block first degree hard block second degree hard block third degree hard block right bundle branch block left bundle branch block etc so what do you think you're seeing in this ecg people so here they are saying that this is atrial flutter okay sawtooth appearance what do you think is happening in this ecg Look at the QRS, 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 this is, and they've shown some stars here. So basically, this is ventricular fibrillation. Here they have shown the name of a condition which has a specific name. This is Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Sinus rhythm is there, left right axis deviation, short PR interval, slurred upstroke of the QRS complex, etc. Delta wave, dominant R wave in lead V1. Where is V1? Here. What are they saying? There's a dominant R wave. Okay. So this book has quite a lot of information that you should know to interpret ECG. Normally we run around with ECG to our seniors and ask them how do you think this ECG is. Even basic interpretation as of now I do not know. However, I want to learn too. Okay, some formula also here. And usually I have seen people differ with their opinions on a specific ECG. That is also strange. So we try to learn from others and they themselves, each one is giving a different opinion about the same ECG. So you understand how it is, right? So this is the book, The ECG Made Easy. At the end of saying some ECGs that you must know, let's look at them. Okay, don't feel bad people. We'll just look at two or three, okay? ECGs you must be able to recognize. This is that last chapter. So here and there, just look at one ECG and tell me what you see here. What do you think there is in this rate? Does it look fine? Rhythm, does it look fine? QR is complex. Is P waves, does do they look fine? Is there ST elevation? And how is anything else you see? A 60-year-old man who had severe chest pain two days earlier. Okay, but tell me what you're seeing in this ECG 5. So this is the basic history they are giving. Okay, now you have to give the diagnosis, which is there here, which is nice. So here they are saying that this is an infarction, right? So uh, indicates an inferior myocardial infarction. Why all that information they have given here, which you can look at. Fine people. And how will you manage clinically also they have given, which I like. So some things that you can learn by yourself uh, about ECG from this book okay so I think this that much is enough right for now the book ECG made easy ninth edition
by John Hampton and Joanna Hampton. That's all for now, guys. Bye-bye.